welcome in this video we're going to show you how to paint this flower now the flower I have here it's yellow it's got some red uh, areas of texture here in the middle and then it's also got these little specks um, the flower petals tend to be in focus uh, these little guys tend to grow out of focus and become blurry there's some shadows we also have um, a blurry background behind it now my approach to this is the same approach I'm going to use for you know a, a fruit or a vegetable and that I'm going to um, have a document about the same way right and I have a background copy there let's make it just solid here and um, then we also uh, want to put these side by side so I want to remind you just go up to the top here and change it to two up mode right and if you don't like this setup you want to have the um, picture on the other side you can you just switch it over and uh, let's try it again doing it the other way let's see here I'm gonna switch this back over and there we go and then see if I'll do two up and I see now it's on the other side alright so you can um, bring up both pictures at the same time I'm gonna make the window for my um, yellow flower picture a little smaller so I'm gonna bring this over and uh, one of the things I'm also gonna do is tell it to do a zoom all windows so I'm on the magnifying glass I'm gonna tell it to do a zoom all windows so that when I zoom in it's gonna zoom in on both um, and that's gonna help help make my um, uh, my detail work work okay uh, and notice they are different to begin with um, you can use the tablets zoom thing to make that change just one of them so you see when I use the um, the tablets uh, zoom bar that little non button area on the left there and I can go in and out and it makes it to where it doesn't actually change that one so use that one when you want to just zoom in on your own picture there's also this option under the hand tool if you find the hand tool go to the rotate tool and you can make it uh, rotate um, your picture now that's very useful and you can also tell it to rotate all windows so if you rotate your drawing it rotates your photo this is just a smart thing to do because if you rotate both of them at the same time your brain doesn't have to turn it in in its you know and process that inside it uh, itself so anyway uh, definitely turn that on and have it on to rotate all windows also under the regular old hand tool you can tell it to scroll all windows so if you were to zoom in and then switch to the space bar it's gonna do both of them at the same time so this is just a couple of setup things that you can use to make things uh, work a little a little better uh, I'm gonna zoom out all right so now that I'm ready to start I'm going to uh, get my brush and I'm going to create a new layer we're gonna call it drawing and uh, this is where I'm going to set up a little sketch for this I'm going to sketch I think yeah, go ahead and use black and I'm gonna have a pretty small brush uh, my brush let's check my brush settings here uh, it's around 70 percent hardness uh, spacing is 10 percent uh, it's a tiny brush right now it's 38 pixels I might even go smaller and go to transfer I have pen pressure on so when I draw you can see how it kinda looks not too not too much alright so now if you look at this we have kind of a crossing downwards here down to the left we have a crossing kinda of up and to the right and down to the right so I'm gonna do use a little bit of rotation here to make this go straight up and down and then I'm gonna go to my brush and I'm gonna go straight up and down so let's see about here and go straight down this is just kinda of setting up the the axis right of my picture maybe I'll switch back to that rotation and see if I can get this level across and then we'll switch to our brush and we'll go level across let's see how that works yeah and then we'll rotate one more time and see if I can get this last one straight up let's see go this way there we go so that's about straight up and and then I'll do that section so basically I set up this this little 
asterisk drawing to just set up the direction of these pedals. And I'll go ahead and reset my view. So now that I've got that, I'm going to start getting some of these um, ones to go out. I think I'm going to start with uh, this one here on the right that goes on top of the other ones. So you can see this one's on top here. So I'm going to uh, go back to my brush here and see if I can paint that up. And we'll take that around. It's going to go off page. Take it around this way and go off page. Then um, let's see. Um, I feel like I feel like I need to also do these ones here. So I'm going to go down from these ones and take it down and do the same thing over here and take it down. And I'm not too concerned about getting this exactly right. I'm gonna I want to get it close, but it's not it's not a big deal if it's off. It's still gonna look like a flower, and that's what my goal is. Um, and kind of like when you're painting somebody's hair, you don't paint every strand of hair. You just make it look like their hair. Um, all right, you go blind trying to do that much detail. And then we'll do these other ones here coming out underneath. This one gets down a little further than that. Notice that this line here was incorrect and I used it to help me find this line. Remember, don't erase. You don't need to erase. Alright, and then um, let's get this little guy over here. He's much smaller. Alright, um, let's see. I feel like, I feel like maybe our, our image is a little taller than that one, so I'm going to kind of cut this off here. See, that's my bottom. And make, this, make this one a little smaller. Okay. All right. So here's my initial sketch. Um, I'm going to keep that on, and I'm going to make a new layer. We're going to call it underpainting. Oops. Need a. There we go. Underpainting. All right. So now on the underpainting, I'm going to use it. Um, I'm going to create uh, a palette. Um, wow. I'm looking at this again, and it looks like maybe I'm all too too high on this. No problem. We'll just go back to our bottom layer here and we'll just pull it down. Yeah, I think that's going to help. Yeah, just pulling it down. That way I can make this one look a little taller and skinnier. We'll return to that right quick and just kind of fix that. Yeah, much better. Okay, and then this one makes more sense. We'll ignore that line. Okay, great. So now back on the underpainting, let's see if we can start creating a palette. So I'm going to start getting some colors. So I'm going to hold down Alt or the little button on the tablet to sample that yellow. And then I'm going to press really hard over here on my underpainting layer and create that color. I'm going to get some more colors. Get a bunch of yellows here. All right. And um, now I'm going to probably get some reds. I'm going to get that deep red. I'm get the red next to it. And maybe some of that orangish red. All right, so I got some good yellows and good reds. I'm also going to get this kind of grayish color. I don't really know. It's kind of not super gray. I'm going to get maybe this um, color. What are these called? Like pistols or something? Stamen? I don't remember all that. Anyway, all right. Um, so we got some good colors here. Uh, this is my basic color palette for the flower itself. I probably need to have some type of a green come in, but I don't know if I can quite get to it. Anyway, um, we'll start with just kind of setting up some of these uh, areas inside the large area of the petal. We're going to ignore the shadows. We're going to ignore the red and just try and work as if it was all this yellowish color within this area. Now I want you to notice some things. I'm going to zoom in on this one on the left here. You see how there's lines that come down. You need to look for those to see if there's some type of particular uh, line work that's necessary for your petal because you'll be doing obviously a different flower and I want you to make sure you can recognize the direction of brush strokes. So in my case my brush strokes need to go outwards like that to mimic those lines. Another thing is, is when I'm on my brush one of the things about it is having that brush tip shape and the hardness set to a, a higher percentage like this is going to allow me to kind of crisscross some lines and create a uh, those yellow lines within that area. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is um, make a slightly bigger brush and I'm going to start painting some of that yellow inside here on that underpainting layer. 
keeping my strokes that direction and you can see that just making those those lines that direction ends up creating some of the line work because the uh, the overlap of the transparent transparent brush. Now I do want this to become really solid, so I'm going to start pressing really hard and get my underpainting to be pretty pretty dark. Uh, and uh, some of this probably needs to get a little lighter in spots, so I'm going to let it get lighter. Sample some of that and blend it out so that while it is lighter like it was just a moment ago it's opaque so you can't see through it so that's good and um, let's get some of the orange color a little smaller size brush over here on the right kinda just setting up that darker shadow along that edge um, not really worrying about the actual projected shadows or cast shadows from the middle but instead just trying to make it change with the contour have some lines going down through and uh, you see a big one kind of coming that way make it kind of fade so you can see how I'm I'm kind of mimicking those directional strokes alright so what I'm gonna do here is show you how to do this one here while I'm talking then I'm gonna kinda of fast forward to get all the other ones in so I'll do those in fast motion for you uh, I think maybe we'll put a little bit of the reddish color in just to kinda show that it's there although I'll probably end up having to paint over it completely so I'm gonna just kinda get a little bit of that in here just to kinda say yes I do get a little redder in that area and like I said this is basically the type of drawing I want. I'm not worried about the shadows yet. And I'm not worried about these guys yet because I'll do those on a probably a completely different layer. Uh, so with that I'm gonna try and fast forward for you and we'll get back in a little bit. <laughs> 